Welcome all. Today we will be discussing the non odontogenic cysts. Some basic definitions now. A cyst is a pathological fluid filled cavity lined by epithelium. A non odontogenic cyst is a cyst arising along the lines of fusion of various bones or embryonic processes. Coming to the classification given by Cossens, it can be classified into incisive canal cyst, nasolabial cyst, sublingual dermoid cyst, thyroglossal duct cyst, branchial cyst, foregut cysts. According to Schaefer's, we have uh, fissural cysts and developmental cysts. Under the fissural cysts, we have nasopalatine duct cyst. Median palatine, median palatal cyst, globular maxillary cyst, median mandibular cyst. Under the developmental cysts, includes nasoalveolar cyst, palatal cysts of neonate, thyroglossal tract cyst, benign cervical lymphoepithelial cyst, epidermoid and dermoid cysts, heterotopic oral gastrointestinal cyst. The first cyst we will be looking at is the nasopalatine duct cyst, uh, which we will be referring to as NPDC. It is the most common of non odontogenic cysts. It is of development origin and non neoplastic in nature. The location is peculiar and specific as it affects the midline anterior maxilla. Radiographically, it characteristically represents a heart-shaped radiolucency in between the roots of the maxillary central incisors. The epithelium is believed to be arising from the persistence of epithelial remnants of nasopalatine duct. The usual locations we find the cysts are in the incisive canal located in the palatine bone and behind the alveolar process of maxillary central incisors. When it occurs in the soft tissue of the palate that overlays the foramen, it has a special name called the cyst of incisive parallel. Etiology It could be due to trauma, infection, mucus retention with associated salivary gland ducts. Spontaneous cystic degeneration of residual ductal epithelium is the most likely etiology. Clinical features Males are more affected than females, uh, almost 18 to 20 times. Uh, and uh, it affects mostly the 40 to 60 years of age groups. Small cysts are seen in the early stages, which are frequently asymptomatic, but sometimes may exhibit disproportionately severe symptoms. The larger cysts can usually cause swelling or discharge of uh, fluid or pain and or a combination of all these. The patients complained of a salty taste in the mouth. Devitalization of pulps of associated teeth is also seen. The large and destructive cysts uh, create perforation of the labial and palatal bony plates and may cause expansion with a fluctuation swelling of the anterior palate and the other palate region. Extra bony cysts that develop within the soft tissues of incisive papilla area of anterior heart palate are present as translucent or bluish colored dome shaped swelling. The slow, it, these cysts show slow and progressive growth and may sometimes exceed 60 millimeters diameter. Tooth displacement is the most common than bony expansion. In this orthopatomograph, we can make out the heart shaped radiolucency which lies between the roots of the central incisors in the maxilla. The differential diagnosis includes lateral radicular cyst or cystic ameloblastoma. But we can differentiate the cystic ameloblastoma as it causes knife edge or blunt root reception 
of the involved teeth, which doesn't happen in the NPDC. And the treatment includes enucleation via a palatal or buccal approach. Median palatal cyst arises from epithelial entrapped, epithelium entrapped along the line of fusion of the palatal processes of the maxilla. Clinical features include it is located in the midline of hard palate between the lateral palatal processes, may enlarge over a prolonged period of time to produce a definitive palatal swelling, clinically visible, which is clinically visible. Etiology is usually Radiographic findings include a well circumscribed radiolucent area opposite the bicuspid and molar region, frequently bordered by a sclerotic layer of bone. The arrow represents the sclerotic layer bordering the cyst. Histological features Lining of cyst usually consists of stratified squamous epithelium overlying a relatively dense fibrous connective tissue band which may show chronic inflammatory cell infiltration. Occasionally, lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium and sometimes lined by modified squamous epithelium. Treatment usually in involves surgical removal and thorough cure touch. Coming to the globular maxillary cyst. A fusion cyst found within bone between the maxillary lateral incisor and canine teeth. It's of unknown etiology. The clinical features uh, seldom presents uh, any clinical manifestations. It is usually found as an accidental finding in routine radi radiographic examination. Rarely, if infected, may cause complaint of local discomfort and pain in the area. In the radiographic findings, we find an inverted pear-shaped radiolucency between the roots of the lateral incisor and the cuspid, usually causing divergence of the roots of these teeth. The adjacent teeth are vital unless coincidentally infected. Differential diagnosis include, uh, includes periapical granuloma, apical periodontal cyst, lateral periodontal cyst, odontogenic keratosis, central grain cell granuloma, calcifying odontogenic cyst, odontogenic myxoma. Histological features uh, Cyst is lined by either stratified squamous or ciliated columnar epithelium. Fibrous connective tissue issue usually shows inflammatory cell infiltrate. Treatment. Surgically, it is removed, preserving the adjacent teeth if possible. Next is the median mandibular cyst. It is a developmental cyst which is extremely rare. The clinical features include a symptomatic lesion that is discovered during routine radiographic examination. The lesion seldom produces cortical expansion and the associated teeth react normally to pulp vitality tests. Radiographic features Unilocular, well circumscribed radiolucency sometimes may appear multilocular. Histological features include a thin stratified squamous epithelium often with many folds and projections lining a central lumen. Sometimes the cyst may be lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Treatment and prognosis uh, it's a conservative surgical excision with preservation of associated teeth.